Hello, so here I am today, Priyanku, to speak to you, no, to share with you the life that I lead with the young people of today. The young people of today are exposed to a myriad of experiences. They live a life with a culture that encourages seeking and questioning. Theirs is a generation that is all about breaking stereotypes and questioning age-old traditions. From a generation of assembly line students to a generation of students that have been encouraged to think out of the box. Our generation and this generation have what I feel an insurmountable gap. We used to walk on cues with fingers on our lips. They are encouraged to speak up. We were told to stay home after dark. They experience life through travel from a very, very young age. Us and them. And all in all, we are just ordinary men. Me and you. God knows it's not what we would choose to do. Gospel truth from Pink Floyd. And it is so apt in my life. I did not choose to be with young people. I did not think that I would be anywhere near teenagers. But here I was, an ordinary woman facing them, the green lions. Which is the reason, why did I call them the green lions? You see, I just couldn't connect. So I called them the green lions. Green with envy, jealousy, anger. And lions, ready to pounce on me? And I would get angry, feel judged, and judge them in return. However, there were a few in this pack who stood apart. One of them a mischief monger, up to no good in the classroom. One such escapades landed him in the swimming pool, fully clothed, with his friends carrying him along. After that ensued a very, very embarrassing meeting in the principal's office, in which we were told to settle our differences. Separately, of course. I might have had a hand in pushing him in. After that, I did a lot of brainstorming. This young chap shared his birthday with my younger daughter. So I decided that I would bake him a cake. On the fateful day, I baked two cakes. One for my daughter, which was promptly discarded because she said it tasted like bread. And the other, I valiantly carried it into my classroom. And the beaming boy cut it with such happiness and shared it with all his classmates. My cakes taste bad. They're not good people. And we laughed about it and connected, just like that. Connecting with young people seems like a very, very daunting task. But once you scratch on the surface, that hardened exterior shield that they have just melts away. And you see this young child who's so caring, compassionate, courageous, and even vulnerable. Why do I call them courageous? What makes them compassionate? What is their vulnerability? What I have come to understand is that this generation is largely concerned about physical beauty and acceptance amongst their peers. The world is very adult. The judgment is harsh, and they're just fighting to fit in. No one can be short, dark, fat, or anything that is beyond or below the acceptable norms. This manifests itself in the amount of makeup products that boys as well as girls use. Which is the reason maybe why beauty products that are encouraging mutilation of physical body parts are in 
Botox, lip injections. Are you serious? For heaven's sake, it's just a baby that has learned to walk and talk. And it's already broken. Not just physically, but mentally, it must be a minefield in there. As a part of the pastoral care team in the Assam Valley School, I was assigned to a senior boy's house a few years back. One night while doing my post dinner duty, I heard screams and grunts of pain emanating from one of the rooms. Fearing the worst, I rushed inside. Two juniors standing guarding the door, having a lot sheepish look about them. I barged in. There lay two boys getting their legs, arms, and chests waxed. Ma'am, don't look. You'll get nightmares, someone said. I don't know who. I was in a daze. This was alien to me. Boys waxing? Even more alien was the concept of boys walking in the corridors wearing sheet masks. I mean, what are they so concerned about? Why is this absurd, you know, almost obsessive connection to physical beauty? As a person from an era who has grown up with unquestioning obedience, I failed to understand this. This was unexplored territory for me. I could have been flippant about it and just brushed it off. But as an adult, I can just talk about it, try to convince them, and still fail every time. Maybe in our dogged determination to keep children on track with blinkers on has made us forget one thing, that if there are as many minds as there are hearts, then there must be as many kinds of lives loves as there are hearts. If in this fast-paced world, one would just take some time out to talk and walk beside these young people, they would be facing this young adult who has got such insight into life and such worldliness that it is daunting. Young people no longer daydream. They are trying to fit into this one-size-fits-all mold, which is making them fall apart at the seams. And in order to stop the pain, they resort to all kinds of releases. So here I was now, me and my green lions. The perspective has changed a little bit. Green now stood for resurrection, and renewal, and lions for courage under fire. And oh, what a journey it has been. All my self-taught pop psychology fell flat on its face when I saw these young people overcome myriads of challenges, show so much compassion and courage. Some stories remain etched to my heart forever. There was this young boy begged to be the champion at the marath marathons. In the heats, he had won several, you know, he had broken several records. And it was said that he was at the threshold of being the next popular high school champion. On the fateful day, as he was running well ahead of the others, his shoes tore. But he continued running on the pebbled racetrack. One, two, three, ten runners overtook him. The eleventh runner, as he was about to overtake him, stopped, took off his shoes, and gave it to this runner. Both of them finished the run that day. Other champions were celebrated, but for me, those two boys will always remain one of a kind. I have not seen such examples of perseverance and empathy from adults in a long time. 
Young people stop to help others when adults will not even spare a second glance. There is this young girl who always helps to carry her elderly teacher's bag upstairs to the staff room every single day and has never told anybody about it. During COVID, we had a few children who were stuck on campus because the borders were sealed. They took in a young stray puppy, fed it, took care of it, and before they were able to go home, they ensured that the puppy was adopted by someone else and it went to a good home. At a time, they faced admonishments and wrath of several adults for taking the puppy in. But in face of severe mental anxiety of breaking so many school rules, not being with their parents, being unable to travel, they still kept that puppy safe. You see, the green lions always come through. So if you are a young person of today, understand that you are a courageous and a compassionate being. There is so much to you that we do not see or understand. But it is up to you not to accept the impossibility of things. Self-compassion should be your first priority. Maybe Namjoon said it better. Namjoon from BTS. Yesterday I made a lot of mistakes, but that was still me. I am who I am today with all my faults. Tomorrow I might be a tiny bit wiser, but that would be me too. I have come to love myself for who I was, who I am, and who I will be tomorrow. To all my green lions and lionesses, much love. Thank you.